Retirement is all about harmless hobbies, early nights, and moaning. Or so it's old. But for some pensioners turning 60, <laughs> is a license to break all the rules. I'm 18 in my head and about 398 in my body. These outrageous oldies are blowing their pensions, winter fuel allowance and the kids' inheritance and behaving like there's no tomorrow. How's that, Fran? Turn around, let's see how you look. I like a man who can give me what I like. Now, if you don't mind, I'll take my shirt off and I'll show you what I mean. I made a vow that I would grow old disgracefully and now I'm nearly 80 and I'm still disgraceful. They may have an appointment with the Grim Reaper, but until he catches them, they're determined to grow old disgracefully. Beautiful. I don't know how much fun you can have when you get old. I'd have been old earlier. I'm happy to be retired. This time, we meet some of the 50,000 Brits who've retired to Spain, leaving rain, routine and restraint behind. From the beaches and bars of Benidorm, to the Mediterranean majesty of Mallorca. Our expat pensioners aren't snoozing through a siesta. They're rocking an OAP fiesta. Meet millionaire jailbird John Bosomworth, determined to export aristocratic excess to Mallorca. I think drink drives me. <sighs> God, I needed that. Flash Harry, a scooter riding sign writer with four collapsed marriages, one collapsed lung, and a 60-a-day habit. I thought you were bloody smoking. Give me a minute. Get a waste of space. Dirty-minded DJs with a license to flirt, Susie Bond and Barry Moon. Not a tribute act, you know. This is a real thing. And former nut factory manager, Kazza. Ready for action. <laughs> Outraging Benidorm with her partner in crime, Val. Proudly putting the X-rated into X-pad. It's Viva España. Benador, one of Spain's most British seaside resorts. It's full of elderly expats. The Villa Mark caravan site on the outskirts of town is more British than Bogner. 64-year-old Kaza Watson, a former nut factory manager, is stocking up in the site supermarket. It's so British, Kaza could be back home in Durham. Morning, Angie. OK. Yes, fine. You? Yes, right here. Ah, ginger nuts. Oh, steak in the tin. Baked beans, you can't beat them at all. I'm trying to balance the good with the bad, so I'm balancing my drinking with the eating, because at the end of the day, my drinking will never, never stop. But I can curtail my eating and eat properly, so then I can drink a bit more. Kaza's best friend is retired care assistant and fellow camper, Val Bloom. We're always mucking about, messing about, aren't we? We are, certainly. Um, always up to mischief, up yeah, to no good. Exactly. We met in the indoor pool. At Aqua Aerobics, yeah? Yeah, Aqua Aerobics yeah, four years did. ago. And basically clicked then, and, you know, we've been friends ever since. I don't think we've ever had a crossword, have we? No. Never, ever. They've never had a crossword, but they have had a crosswind. I'll be in Val, and she is a very windy girl. <laughs> and I said to Val, it's like the tsunami when I'm stood behind you. So I said, move over to one side. <laughs> so many expats have retired here, they've even got their own radio station, Pure Gold FM. This is me. Well, folks, it's wall to wall sunshine here on the northern coast of Lanka. We've got highs of 16 degrees, dropping to 5 this evening. In their 60s, Susie and Barry entertain older listeners with their flirting and dirty jokes. I'm Susie Bond, and that's weather from Pure Gold. Oh, I've got something for you. What's that? It's female called the yeah, female focus hair implants. Do I need them? I was keeping it. I first you. met Susie Bond, uh, I think it was at Lee Cabaret. We got chatting to her made friends with her, and I said to her, you come on the radio, you've got a nice husky voice, you know. So, Tom, I got your Skype message, you've been married now five weeks and you haven't had an argument. 
And because me and the wife have been happily married now for 24 years. Yeah. Not bad out of 41, is it? <laughs> and we've only had one argument. It started on our wedding day, hasn't finished yet. <laughs> <laughs> Benidorm's officially Spanish, but the town streets are crammed with cavalries of retired Brits mounted on mobility scooters, known locally as Benidorm chariots. One of the best-known charioteers on Benidorm streets is 67-year-old Flash Harry Bird. Hello, my love. <laughs> this is Monica from Malta. Yeah, fabulous singer, very good singer, always singing. You take care of her. bye, bye. This one, flying machine, this one. It will... Well, I wouldn't like to think how fast it'll go, but it's fast. Flash Harry has emphysema, but the lung disease hasn't taken the wind out of his sails. I'd, I'd drive it madly. A bit like the wife now and again. I could murder him. Harry moved to Benidorm nine years ago and is happily married to Maureen. Dickhead. Out. Oh, it's not funny. I don't like I'm going to fucking kill him. Dickies. I don't know. Have a look yourself. Harry, could you cope on your own? Exactly. I smoke too much. That's why I've a collapsed lung. I've always had it in my, in my mind that I wanted to come and live, live in Spain. And apparently you, you get another 10 years on your life in the climate. Where else could you get a house like this? We've got oranges. Can you imagine growing them in Bradford? If I don't know how much, how much fun you can have when you get old. I'd have been old earlier. <laughs> Great time in my life. Between them, the adoring couple boasts six marriages, seven kids, 13 grandchildren, a dog, and a parrot. Love you, Bendy. Flash Harry first romanced Maureen when she was a waitress in Bridlington. Right. Where's my, I've lost my signal. And love was not on the menu. To tell you the truth, I don't think I fancied him. Honestly, I really, really don't. I think he pissed me off because he had a Crombie suit on. And he had, a, he, had, he had a suit on and a crumbie. And he stood there at the bar like that. And talking to my mate, I thought, oh, I'd have a few drinks. She were married. I were married. And then, when, when, I, when I were going through a divorce, I went out one night and, and she was there on her own. And I, said, I, I just said to my children, and she, she wiggled the bum. Yeah, so I just walked up to him like that and I just went like that. In the shortest skirt that you've ever seen in your life. I think it was just, um, you know what that you do in bedroom that we were together first for. <laughs> <laughs> Flash has clearly always had a way with the birds. I'm gonna kill you in a minute! Come on, give Daddy a kiss. At least Harry's parrot understands him. Come on, Daddy kiss. <laughs> Benji. Coming up. Kaza and Val unleash themselves on Benidorm's fiesta. Maureen gangs up on Flash Harry and the Fags. I'd love a lot, lot, a lot of years with, with him, but I don't think we're going to have bleeding. We'll be lucky if we get ten if he carries on smoking. I think I'd uh, better have another. And John Bosomworth reveals how his boozing put him behind bars. Going to jail was the turning point in my life. Britain's elderly empire hasn't just annexed Benidorm. 170 miles offshore, on the upmarket Isle of Mallorca, ageing expats have established another colony. One of its leading lights is heavily pickled 68-year-old aristocrat John Bosomworth, happily leading La Vida Soca. I think drink drives me. The snag is, my consumption can be huge. I'll drink a bottle of wine going round the garden. A 
I've had a privileged life. Uh, I was born into money. There's, 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 you can't get away from that fact. It was a very useful asset, I can tell you. When he retired in 1999, the former senior magistrate cashed in his family's Yorkshire estate and invested the proceeds in three Mallorcan mansions and an enviable wine cellar. I've wasted thousands enjoying myself. Krug? Probably 1,500 a bottle on something like that now. Petrus? In a London restaurant, five, six, seven thousand a bottle, something like that. Maybe even more. It wasn't Spain's cheap plonk that brought him here. Tokai. Very sweet. Very lush. At one time was reserved basically for the bazaars, Madeira. About 3,000. I come to the age now where, you know, wine is for drinking and not laying down. John never got round to siring an heir, so he's the last of a long aristocratic bloodline. It's a family coat of arms, like everything in the family now. It's a little bit tarnished and dusty and old. <laughs> Wonderful. God, I needed that. Over in Benidorm, 60-a-day man Flash Harry is continuing to defy the doctors. He needs to stop smoking. He's been diagnosed with emphysema, and they've told him he's only got one, one lung. His right lung's completely gone. They can't mend it and, and nothing. And they've told him that uh, if he doesn't stop smoking, he'll end up on an oxygen mask. I'd love a lot of years with him, but uh, we'll be lucky if we get 10 if he carries on smoking. P people have passed away with emphysema because it's a breathing problem, isn't it? It affects the arts and everything and stuff like that. <laughs> Chain smoking may have cost Harry a lung, but he refuses to give up. You don't get with them like this in Shipley. <laughs> it's judgment day for Harry's health and his marriage. Maureen's made him book an appointment at the hospital. We've argued, as I say, I threatened to divorce him to make him go to the doctors because he was choking to death, and I mean really choking. The costs of his health care are reimbursed by the British NHS. The results will reveal what half a century of chain smoking has done to Harry. His remaining lung is scanned for abnormalities, and a final test measures whether his already low lung capacity has shrunk to life-threatening levels. Then I'll have to put a peg on your nose. So will Maureen's fears for his life be justified? Probably going to confirm what, what I think I know, what the National Health have said. But it's, all, it's always nice having another um, diagnosis of the same thing, isn't it? So um, it's important not only to take the treatment, which is good and it's going to make you feel better, of course, mm -hmm. but it's important to quit smoking. Mm -hmm. I understand you have a problem. It's Very difficult. Three packages a day. Mm. Yeah. Back at the villa, Flash has to tell Maureen the doctor's verdict. Uh, as far as uh, my breathing, <coughs> they did say it won't get any better. If you don't take notice of him, that's your own fault. Mallorcan millionaire John is an unrepentant chain drinker, and he's not bothered about the health consequences. If you think about it, all these people go to the gym. They're there, they're writhing away, they're jumping up and down, they're cycling, they're wearing the joints out and they're wearing the elbows out. And what are they trying to do? We all know that you've got to raise the heartbeat, get a good sweat on and work at it. But they're wearing everything out. I lay in bed in the morning, my heart's going like hell, I've got a cold sweat and I haven't even been to the gym, so the wine is doing everything for me, I'm getting the best of two worlds. True, think about it. <laughs> Alcohol has not always been a life enhancer for John. In 1996, getting his ex-wife to help cover up a drink-driving accident had the sobering effect of 15 months in jail. Going to jail was 
the turning point in my life. The reason I got there, I'm extremely ashamed of. But being there was a very, very interesting. And had I not been to jail, I wouldn't be here today. After serving his sentence, the former magistrate's reputation was in ruins. So he decided to start a new life abroad. Obviously, I regret going. Obviously, I, I, I regret the whole situation uh, and the embarrassment I must have caused my parents, etc., etc. Once again, booze. That's what it was. Purely that. Nothing more, nothing less. Yeah. But the bonus was it got me to Mallorca. Benidorm also has its bonuses, like the annual festival. The official Spanish fiesta lasts for six days, but organizers added a seventh dedicated to Benidorm's bulging population of aging Brits. And they're doing their country proud. 64-year-old Kaza and Val are getting ready to join them. Morning, Val. All festival goers are expected to wear fancy dress. <laughs> hey! No, I've only done my hair piece for my eye. Pretty hell, Val, don't they wear you down then? And their outfits are suitably outrageous. I'm going as a policewoman, but a naughty policewoman. And there'll be quite a lot getting spanked with my truncheon. Ready for action. Boo, boo, boo. That's it. Sorted. Already. Val's husband, Graham, is not keen. I'm glad I'm not going. <laughs> In there. The fiesta may be Spanish, but there are few finer English traditions than a packed lunch. I've got sausage rolls in there, nuts, crisps, Pringles. Two bottles of vodka. Kaza's husband, Brian, has offered to give them a lift. Come on, where have you been? Let's have your licence. Show us your documents. Documents, please. 12 years. We've been coming out here 12 years, and so it's, it's nice. <laughs> I no, just drive him about. It's like a merry-go-round. You don't know what she's going to do next. She might be good and she might be bad. But nine times out of ten, she's bad. Dressed to thrill, Kaza and Val are raring to go on a full day's boozing alongside all the other British OAPs. They do like a good drink. They like good value for money, but they do like a good drink. In fact, sometimes they drink the younger ones right under the table. When I first started in here, I thought that I'd be, oh, it's full of old people, I'll get an early night and that, but I have to kick them all out at the end of the night and, like, come on, you know, I want to go home. 12 noon and time for a liquid lunch. Couldn't get into the bars for drinks, so we just plastic cups, stuffing our bags and we're pouring it in and drinking out of our bags. For Benidorm's Brits, the fiesta is an excuse to act a fraction of their age. I think I'll be spending all afternoon showing my backside off <laughs> and getting spanked, which is not a bad idea sometimes. Val <laughs> never behaves herself. That's what I like about Val. She is another party animal like me. Fancy dress or not, everyday OAP life in Spain's resorts can feel like a fiesta, especially in the mansions of Mallorca. He may be a fun-loving millionaire, but John Bosomworth doesn't like to be labelled. I don't really want to think myself as a playboy, but I've certainly played very hard, and I'm no longer a boy, and I'm still here, so I haven't killed myself yet. Did a lot of motor racing. And uh, if I could find one, chase the ladies as well. Uh, this is it's just some Russian caviar. Ironically, jailbird John chased and caught an ex-copper. Tor and John started dating 12 years ago when she was just 23. <laughs> a friend of mine said he needed a bit of help driving a boat down from the UK down to, to Mallorca here, so I said, why not? So. Santa Ponza Marina, we ended up, uh, stayed on a little boat there for a month, and um, John was living on his boat, and he used to pass the end of my little boat every day. He used to read me loads of crap jokes off his phone. <laughs> but it's better than plodding the beat in Merseyside.
they have a shared enthusiasm. We have a great time. We both sadly like drinking. I think it's both it's in both our, our both our bloodlines. We like a drink or two. Looks like we're going to have to open another bottle, you know, which is rather embarrassing. Sonny right. I've very, very rarely ever been taken without a glass in my hand, a photograph or anything. Always have a glass in my hand. Uh, it's nice, it just re just relaxes me. Tor's dad, however, wasn't relaxed about the relationship. I suppose my father wasn't exactly comfortable with it because John's three three years older than him. Uh, but um, I've always gone for the older man. But 68-year-old John likes to keep 35-year-old Tor on her toes. Well, actually, as, as, as my life pans out, you're not young enough. I'm going to die with a 40-year-old driver. It's the last thing I've got want. You have my best years, unbelievable. Was that your vest? <laughs> Fucking hell. Coming up, Maureen gets down to business. Quantas, five yardos. You take quattro. See, good off yours. We'll be in, we'll be in. Come on, then. Happy campers, Kazza and Val, go drink cycling. Come on, Lena, go push. <laughs> Come on. And John Bosomworth exports English country life to Mallorca. We have forgotten to do. Your contact lenses in. Ah. Oh, bollocks! It's the day after the fiesta, and Benidorm's Brits are recovering in the sun. Saucy OAP DJs Susie and Barry are back on the air. We've got highs of 18 degrees, dropping to 13 this evening. A wind speed of uh, just three or four miles per hour. I'm Susie Bond, and that's the weather from Pure Gold. But the shy ones are sending some emails through. We got um, at Shirley 71. The sunshine works wonders for my arthritis. I've never been so physically active, Shirley. Ooh. Oh, 71. Hey, we are. need to know a bit more about that, don't yes, we? Yes, let us know more, Shirley, about <laughs> yes. being physically active. <laughs> Bill, 75, <laughs> he wants to know where he can get half a Viagra tablet. <laughs> he just wants to raise it a bit to stop him peeing on his feet. Here, oh, Bill, for come, goodness please, sake. Please, Bill. <laughs> hey, this is a family show. Hey, family <laughs> show, is it? <laughs> Benidorm, a Baywatch for the over-60s. Retired couple Flash, Harry and Maureen love living here almost as much as they love each other. Eight years here, living in Spain. No regrets, not one. Maybe if any regret was that I hadn't met Maureen earlier and that I hadn't moved here earlier. Because what a hell of a life we could have had then. Flash Harry's finances are as much in peril as his lungs, thanks to another of his addictions. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. <coughs> I used to have a big gambling problem. Uh, I'd, I'd work all day, call it the casino on the way home. If I won, I won, but it didn't last me long. Within a few days, I'd lost a lot back. Unfortunately, some of the things that I did to feed the habit were wrong, but I'd, I didn't thieve. I paid everybody back that I borrowed money off. Um, yeah. We've had a bar, lost money. 42 grand lost on that. That gambling bad, really bad. I've ruined my life through it. He still has the occasional flutter. There we are. Winning ticket. Very good, I hope so, I hope so. What do you want? Tenner. To save money, Flash Harry and Maureen often shop at a local bric-a-brac market, popular with thrifty Brits. <laughs> <laughs> <coughs> Euro Maureen's negotiating skills are finely honed. Get it, get it for four, you dickhead. What row? <laughs> yeah. Gracias. Not paying three for them. I'll pay two. I might not even fit me. <laughs> A lot of stuff comes from posh people, don't they? To shop things like this. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, you're going to get this case out in a minute, cos I've had right. enough. Right. Messing about with my trolley. 
Equal rights. No equal about your rights. Not all retired Brits are so hard on. Millionaire ex-convict John Bosomworth is hobnobbing with Mallorca's well-to-do over a liquid lunch. I think I'd uh, better have another. The disgraced Aristo picks up the tab and he always dresses to impress. Now that's a watch. That's a watch. Wow. Proper watch. I have had I don't know how many expensive watches which has raised eyebrows. But I've always tried to buy a watch. A watch is, is a hobby. I, you know, a, these are extortionate. But I've always tried to buy them and then sell them at a profit. This could be an all-day lunch crawl. We do a tour of various tapas bars, and we may even end up at Wellies uh, in Port Isles this evening, just as a, as a refresher, as, a, as the sun goes down. Money may be no object for John, but Harry's gambling has left Maureen watching her Euros. Quantas? Five Euros. We take Quattro. See, si. gracias. We'll be in. We'll be in. I'm dead good at bartering if the person who's selling the stuff will accept it. It's all down to the person, isn't it? Whether they want to take three euros instead of five or whatever. Can we have a media kilo? Gracias. My Spanish is all right for somewhere like here, but like to... Numbers? Have, yeah, numbers, I know the numbers. Euros. But to have a conversation, no. I don't know how to say cabbage in flipping Spanish. I'll have a look. For work? Flash Harry specialises in writing bar signs for happy hours and cut price lager. Most of my customers are English, or they get people to speak to me in English. Yeah, but you don't even try, though, do you? You're, you are ignorant. Uh, I'm, I mean, my memory is pretty shattered. How's I'm just coming in and you? Senility, Maureen, love. It's called senility. It's called marriage. Shut it, Muppet. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Wow, look at these burgers, look. Look at that, lovely jubbly. I'll, I'll try out, I like paella as well. He, he's not into it. Um, the only thing I'm not into is slimy, you don't like slimy fishes. I don't, I'm, I'm oysters White are all, bait and I'm stuff not, like not that. like that. But slimy fishes are on the menu for John Bosomworth and his friends. What for what? I just take the small ones, champagne, plum. When it comes to the finer things in life, the disbarred magistrate's modesty is limited. I like to think that I'm a connoisseur of wines, restaurants, bon viveur, cigars. Well, this is uh, soy mio cut, olive oil on a piece of toast. So it's just a bit of fillet steak, perfect. Fancy foods, I've shat millions. <laughs> Absolute millions have been flushed away. Queso viejo con... Uh, Exacto. Up a six. John's friend Christian is getting nostalgic about their friendship. In actual fact, the, fir the first time I met JB, he, j he was on parole at the time. I was. I tried to shoot him. <laughs> he was on parole in the marina. It was before the days of having bracelets on your ankle. I shouldn't have been there. He sold me a yacht. The yacht wasn't arrived. I'd paid the money, and there was no bleeding keys, and there was no yacht. So I told him, did I not? At the end of the key, I'll shoot you. A lot, a lot of people think he's an outright arsehole, to be honest. Drink may have put John on the wrong side of the law in Britain, but he's happy to wine and dine Mallorca's top brass well into the night. That's just 320 euros. Davide. I've never ever walked out without a glass in my hand. Amazing. I've got to tell you. So far, it's been a 12 hour lunch. <laughs> Benidorm is so sunny, retired expats can enjoy the outdoors all the year round and slow their physical decline. No longer dressed as a kinky policewoman, Kaza emerges from her caravan to hunt down her best mate, Val. Hola! Hola, Kaza! Hola. Come on, shower time! Oh, Have you got the gear? Come I've on. got everything, yeah. 
Kazza and her gang are planning to cure their hangovers with some hair of the dog on a mobile bar. A Benny bike. This looks fun, this girls. <laughs> How are you for this? Yeah. Come on then. For 15 euros, you get three pints of lager and a bar on wheels. Oh. Two. <laughs> <laughs> With eight pints and 16 legs, it's not the easiest vehicle to steer. Steady, steady! Come on! Go get it, <laughs> Terrifying traffic is tiring work. Do you know what? These red lights are a godsend. Give them a rest. Give us a rest, Val. Oh, thank God for that. I've got a num bum and a num crutch. Well, what's <laughs> new, Val? We've well, always got num bums, bums and num crutches. <laughs> hey! Can I have a beer with a float of ice cream in Beer, that? beer! <laughs> <laughs> Next stop, Jumping Jack's Bar. I don't know how I am. It's good for you. I've got you. Oh, it well. Well. Yeah, yeah, yeah. We might pedal faster. Yeah. Oh, me. With a haircut. After 90 minutes boozing on wheels, the ladies take a break from drinking. Right, girls, dinner's here. Yeah. Oh, fish and chips. Oh, thank you. <laughs> Yorkin millionaire John Bosomworth even drinks in his own chapel. It could be a handy place to tie the knot with Tor, his girlfriend of 12 years. That's if he ever gets round to proposing. But I would like to get married. And the problem here with the law is, if you're not married and I die, this, this lot can be left to this. All this property could be grabbed, so I have to get married before I die. I think it'll be a proposal, and before the vicar gives the last rites, a marriage signature, all on the same bed. The trouble is I won't be able to consummate the situation will I, you know, unless the vicar helps me. He couldn't afford the divorce. I think that is the most truest statement she's said all day, and I would concur. There aren't many things John can't afford. He was born into the English upper classes. We had Beamsley Estate uh, near Bolton Abbey. And I spent most of my time there, uh, although I was working, but I was shooting from there. I had a shooting ground and a wonderful gun room there. It was very nice. John shot for his county and his country, winning serious silverware and mingling with celebrities. Stuart and the Duke of Kent. It, there is indeed, <laughs> yes. That was in Wales, that was with Jackie. John left Britain in disgrace, but he's exported the sport he mastered as an English aristocrat. This is the much fabled Purdy, custom made completely for me to my own design. It is the only one it's complete with family crest and initials. Purdy's are rifles made by a 200-year-old London gunsmith. John's is worth £65,000. It's five minutes past 12. Oh, you say you want a drink? Well... It was 11.30 yesterday. Was it? Yes! Well, the coffee steadied me up. I'm ready for off again now. Just cleansing the palate, that's all. I always find that coffee makes you a bit clarty in the mouth. This box, please. John's locked and loaded for a session with Mallorca's best shots. If he's not to let his country down, the former Olympic marksman will have to be at the very top of his game. Oh, bollocks! Put your contact lenses in. <laughs> you so have as well. Shit. I shoot specifically with lenses in. Yeah, you forgot. <laughs> 
I don't think I'll need them. John shot for Britain and was once considered one of Europe's top marksmen. Ah. I mean, most people here are pretty good. Uh, if you're not good, there's not a lot of point in coming here, because they're not easy. Today, without his lenses, he's well beaten by his girlfriend. Ah. Oh, bollocks! Ah. Coming up, it's party time at the caravan site. Flash Harry celebrates reaching his next birthday. I didn't know I'd got this many friends. And John Bosomworth showcases his aristocratic tact. Nice. I told you the Germans would be on time, greedy bastard. Benador may look like a paradise for retired Brits, but all the sun in Spain can't cure every frailty of age. Flash Harry suffers from emphysema, and on doctor's orders, he's finally agreed to try and give up his 60-a-day habit. I won't, ne I won't need these again. I won't smoke today for you. Right. Right. To take his mind off the nicotine withdrawal, Flash and Maureen are going to a wine tasting. Well, oh, dear hell. <laughs> I'll be pissed by 12. <laughs> there aren't too many vineyards back home in Bradford, and it's the couple's first tasting session. This will be fun. You buy one and get six free. Oh, look at them, like, look. I'm going along it yeah. takes them to grow. Oh, look, wine tasting. Oh, the good bit. While Flash and Maureen get ready to taste some tipple, over in Mallorca, John Buzzenworth and Tor are preparing to entertain at home. And the guests are the cream of Mallorca's upmarket expats. I could wash this all day, it's absolutely wonderful. Every taste will be catered for at this glitzy gathering of wealthy expats from Britain and Germany. Just a few friends round for not really a dinner, nothing special. Bits of interesting food and I probably haven't bought enough. While John struggles to make the lobster stretch, Flash and Maureen challenge their palates. Wow. I think I could drink that without orange juice in it. That tastes lovely. That is um, powerful. That I love it. Oh, smell that. Because uh, oh. That's fruity, though. That yeah, I know, but I can't. I'll be sick. Morning, easy time. Without his fags for the first time in half a century, Harry opts for the healthier alternative, an e-cigarette. I'll let you off. There's no damage in that. It's worse than a cigarette. But after only three hours, he's off the wagon and back on the fags. I thought you weren't bloody smoking. You said you weren't smoking. No, it's have it. I just put them in my pocket. Love it. Well, that's I'll, I'll that's perfect. So you broke your uh, promise already, then, haven't you? Give me a minute. You're a waste of space. I know, I know, but you still love me. Shut up, my pigs. <laughs> <coughs> Over in Mallorca, the expats are arriving, and don't mention the war. Ah, good night. <laughs> Werner? Werner? Nice. I, nice. I told you the Germans would be on time, greedy bastards. One of the biggest problems, actually, with any expat, to be quite honest, is that you have so many friends uh, in England. They arrive. Hi, how are you? Haven't seen you for a while. We're going down to the bar. OK, right, so you go down to the bar. And this is continual, continual and continual throughout the summer. Don't they have ties in Yorkshire? Uh, and now it's starting in the winter as well. Uh, people are here all the time, so you're on some form of party, some form of meal, some sort of something, all the time. Back in Benidorm, one lunged wonder Flash Harry is celebrating his 68th birthday. Got plenty of booze. No fine wines here tonight. Look at this alcoholic paradise. <laughs> it's going to be easier doing this, isn't it? I'm doing what I was doing.
there'll be one or two that'll need a wheelchair. <laughs> <laughs> oh, thank you, my darling. Oh. To host the event, Harry's hired legendary Benidorm stand-up, Abby Senior, otherwise known as Gary. You walk a bit quicker, they'll think the place is haunted. Come on. <laughs> like a Michael Jackson through the video. Get a move on. <laughs> Have you seen all them mobility scooters outside? <laughs> I can't believe I'm the only one here with me own it. <laughs> At the Villa Mar caravan site, Kaza's having a 65th birthday booze up, and the dress code is onesies. Hi, Terry. Beautiful food, good singers on the karaoke. Everybody enjoying themselves, loving it, and great atmosphere. Right. So I'm going to sing a song for you all. Right, so I hope you're all enjoying Kaza's husband takes the mic to sing her praises. I felt like a million dollars. You know, what can one ask for? But when he actually dedicates it to me, I get very emotional and I cry. And not only me, there's quite a few people that were in tears near me. And all around us, there was a lot of people in tears. It wasn't a special song, but it is now. Onesies are a little too informal for John's party. But as ever, alcohol is an essential ingredient. Without a doubt, uh, I think wine fires me up. Such a shame, it's so bad for you, isn't it, really? But everything is, what do you do? Anyway, you don't die until the end, do you? <laughs> Flash's party is raging well into the night. Everybody enjoyed it. Didn't know I'd got this many friends. And there's time to remember who's been by his side through thick and thin. That woman that I'm married to, Angel, that lass, amazing. I'm such a lucky guy. Kazza and Val are also counting their blessings. Campsite life is the best. Community, to me, it's like when we were back at home when we were kids. You could leave your door open and walk yes. about. Everybody's here, they help each other out. You know, if any problems, you go to them and they'll help you out, no problem at all. It's really great. Thank you for a lovely, lovely day. No problem. Have a lovely evening. Have a great weekend. I've got to uh, vacate the commode. Mm. Uh, yes, I've got to go now. On Pure Gold FM, Susie and Barry always offer their listeners a final thought for the day. Respect the elderly when you're young. Help the weak when you're strong. Admit your mistakes when you're wrong. Are you listening carefully? Because one day you will grow old, become weak, and expect others to show you some respect. Yes. Say goodbye, Susie Bond. Goodbye, Susie Bond. And always remember, don't put off till tomorrow what you can do today, because you might like it today and you can do it again tomorrow. Good one. Next time on OAP's Behaving Badly. Shake it, shake it, shake it. Meet the fun-loving pensioners. Refusing to grow old. Even at my age, you're still 200 mile an hour, but don't let the police know that. For this group of OAPs... We're definitely adrenaline junkies. It's all about getting teenage kicks. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah.